A comet the size of a small city just woke up near Saturn's orbit. At that distance, nothing should be happening. Temperatures are 150 degrees below zero. Water stays frozen for millions of years. Yet this object started venting gas like it was passing near the sun. Astronomers noticed, filed it away, moved on. Then something smaller arrived from interstellar space. And suddenly, the people getting the clearest images weren't using NASA's equipment. They were using cameras you can buy online. And what they found doesn't match the official story at all. I was really disappointed by the quality of the image because it's smeared by the jitter and the motion of uh, the camera. So we can't really see much better than uh, before. And in fact, the Hubble image was far more informative. We haven't learned anything significant today. For eight years, we've been watching visitors arrive that don't behave the way models predict. Oumuamua accelerating without visible gas jets. Borisov acting like a normal comet. Now 3i Atlas in 2025, showing structures in amateur photographs that barely appear in institutional previews. Separately, each one is strange. Together, they form a pattern. And that pattern gets disturbing when you realize the clearest documentation isn't coming from space agencies. It's coming from independent observers processing data on home computers. Today, we're examining why billion-dollar instruments are producing inferior images compared to backyard telescopes. The jets, uh, but the good news is we don't need to wait for NASA to tell us because there will be a flood of data in the coming weeks leading to December 19th when the object comes closest to Earth and we would figure out the composition, the speed and the amount of mass. Let's start with the object nobody's talking about. Silver 2014 UN 271, designated Bernardinelli Bernstein, measures approximately 93 miles in diameter. That's larger than Rhode Island compressed into a sphere bigger than 99% of asteroids in the main belt, massive enough that researchers debated whether to classify it as a dwarf planet rather than a comet. Here's where the physics breaks. UN271 began exhibiting cometary activity at 9.2 astronomical units from the Sun, just inside Saturn's orbit. At that range, solar radiation is 85 times weaker than on Earth. Surface temperatures hover around negative 150 degrees Celsius. Under those conditions, water ice doesn't sublimate, Carbon dioxide barely reacts, yet observations detected active venting of ammonia, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide in measurable quantities. The coma was visible in optical wavelengths. UN 271's size works against conventional explanations. Large objects retain internal heat longer, but if this comet formed billions of years ago in the Oort cloud, it should be thermally dead. The core should be frozen solid. There's no mechanism in standard models that explains sustained outgassing at this distance for an object this old and this large. What makes UN271 relevant isn't just the anomaly, it's the institutional response. The discovery was published, the activity was noted, then silence, no follow-up press conferences, no detailed breakdown. Now let's talk about how independent observers changed the conversation around 3i Atlas. While institutional observatories released preliminary data, amateur astronomers were doing something different. They were stacking images, hundreds of them. This technique involves taking multiple short exposure photographs and combining them using algorithms that filter out atmospheric distortion and sensor noise. One observer in Chile, with a 14-inch telescope, captured 240 frames over six hours. After processing, the resulting composite showed coma structure so well-defined you could measure brightness gradients across the nucleus. The surface detail was extraordinary. More importantly, it revealed asymmetry. The coma wasn't evenly distributed. It was elongated toward the object's direction of travel. Another astronomer in Spain processed 159 consecutive images and revealed something that should have been front-page news. A collimated jet extending from the forward-facing hemisphere of the nucleus. Not a diffuse tail, a jet narrow consistent, pointing ahead of the trajectory. These weren't professionals with university funding. This was hobbyist equipment, telescopes costing between $2,000, cameras in the $1,500 range, open source software, yet the results exceeded what was publicly available from multi-million dollar orbital platforms like Hubble or ground-based arrays with 8-meter mirrors. So here's the question. Why would consumer-level equipment outperform instruments designed for faint object detection? 
all the press releases you see so far, uh, they're not reproducible on a large scale. It means that this computer on one calculation is billions of times better and faster than an ordinary computer. The answer isn't about hardware capability. It's about data release protocols. Institutional observatories operate under verification processes that delay publication. Amateurs bypass all of that. They capture, process, and publish in days. But that doesn't explain why processed institutional images, when they arrive, lack the detail present in amateur work. That suggests selective presentation. Either the full resolution data exists and isn't being released, or processing methods deliberately avoid highlighting controversial features. The forward-facing jet documented in amateur images of 3i Atlas violates basic cometary physics. When frozen volatiles sublimate, solar wind and radiation pressure push material away from the sun. This creates the classic tail pointing opposite the sun's direction. Every comet we've studied follows this pattern. Its observational fact repeated thousands of times. 3i Atlas breaks that rule. The jet points forward along the object's direction of motion, not perpendicular, not scattered, forward. The plume maintains a narrow geometry across rotation cycles, suggesting the vent source is fixed to a specific surface location. This implies structural integrity. A solid nucleus with a defined aperture releasing material in a controlled direction. Multiple astronomers across different hemispheres using different equipment captured this feature independently. The consistency rules out imaging artifacts or processing errors. It's real, yet no major observatory has released high-resolution imagery clearly showing this jet. No official analysis explaining the physics. When questioned, responses reference ongoing calibration or insufficient signal-to-noise ratios, but amateur equipment with far worse signal-to-noise clearly captured it. Either institutional instruments aren't pointed at this object with adequate exposure time or the data exists and hasn't been publicly released. Both possibilities are problematic. The public record is being shaped by independent observers, not institutional astronomy. For the entirety of recorded history, humanity detected zero confirmed interstellar objects. Then in 2017, Oumuamua, two years later, Borisov, six years after that, 3i Atlas, three visitors in eight years following millennia of nothing. The standard explanation attributes this to improved detection networks. We're finally seeing what was always passing through unnoticed. That logic holds until you account for statistical distribution. If interstellar objects were common but undetected, we'd expect a gradual increase in discoveries as technology improved. Instead, we see a sudden onset. Zero, then three, clustered within a single decade. That's not a detection curve, that's an arrival cluster. Add UN271 to the timeline. Four anomalous objects in less than 10 years. Different origins, different behaviors, but all deviating from established models. Some researchers suggest our solar system might be transiting a denser region of the local interstellar medium. But there's another interpretation. What if the increase isn't about detection? What if there really are more objects? And what if some of them aren't natural? This brings us to the core issue. It's not just that amateurs are capturing good images. It's that institutional images appear deliberately degraded low contrast, minimal detail, features visible in 12-inch hobbyist telescopes somehow absent from 8-meter professional arrays. That doesn't make sense unless raw data is being processed conservatively to avoid emphasizing anomalous features. Maybe verification protocols require months of analysis before high-resolution images are released. Maybe institutional astronomers don't want to comment on unusual features until they fully understand them. But if that's the case, say so publicly, explain the delay, acknowledge what independent observers are documenting. The silence creates exactly the kind of information vacuum that breeds speculation. When people see amateurs revealing forward-oriented jets while official previews show formless blurs, they reach obvious conclusions. Not because they're predisposed to conspiracy thinking, but because the evidence disparity is visible. Anyone can compare them online. And the comparison shows institutional data is either inferior or selectively presented. Within months, 3i Atlas will fade beyond detection range. UN-271 will continue its slow approach, but media attention will evaporate. The images will be archived. The discussions will quiet. But the fundamental questions persist. Why do individuals with hobbyist equipment consistently reveal details absent from institutional releases? Why are multiple anomalous objects appearing simultaneously after centuries of absence? 
Why does official communication feel filtered when independent evidence is freely available? Maybe everything has conventional explanations. Maybe these are rare but natural variations in cometary behavior. But even if that's true, we're still left with a structural problem. Our collective understanding of what transits our solar system is being shaped more by independent researchers than by the institutions we fund for exactly that purpose. And when institutional data contradicts or omits what independent observers document clearly, trust erodes, not because people are paranoid, but because the evidence makes them ask legitimate questions. If you've processed astronomical data yourself, I want to hear about it. Have you found features that don't appear in published results? Document it. Because if this pattern continues, the next major discovery might not come from a space agency, it'll come from someone's driveway. Subscribe for more investigations into what's being documented versus what's being discussed. The sky keeps moving whether we're watching or not. The anomalies, the unusual facts about 3A Atlas, like its huge mass that is a thousand times more than the previous object, a million times more than the first object, and the fact that it moves in the plane of the planets that allowed the NASA observatories to see it, uh, and, you know, that is a, an unusual coincidence. You multiply the probabilities for both of these, you get one in a hundred thousand chance. And then on top of that, there is the unusual composition, the G.